Stacy here. Today we're going to be doing a nature inspired painting with coffee. Coffee acts a lot like watercolor paint, so you'll be hearing me use some of the same words that I would be using if we were talking about watercolor painting, like a wet on wet technique, which is when you have wet paint or coffee on your paper and then you add more wet paint on top of it and it just kind of flows together. You'll also hear me talk about lifting, which is when you have your paint and it's wet or your coffee and it's still wet and you take a paper towel to lift some of the color off and make it lighter. That's how we change the value of watercolor paint or coffee paint. Um, value, if, if you don't already know, means how dark or how light your paint or coffee is or pencil or whatever, how dark or how light it is, the darkness or lightness. Um, you'll also hear me talk about contrast, making things stand out, make, creating a focal point, a uh, focal point being something that captures your attention. So um, I hope you enjoy this project. Now let's find out what all you're going to need. And you might want to watch this one time um, all the way through and then watch it again and pause it as you do it step by step with me. And yours will look different than mine. Everybody's will look different. So don't worry about that. And remember, this is inspired by nature. So it's going to be organic. It's going to be kind of, it should look alive. There's no perfection. There's no wrong way to do it. So don't worry about straight lines or anything like that or any kind of perfection because you'll never see two trees that are exactly alike and you'll never see two people who are exactly alike. So that's the beautiful thing about nature inspired projects. I really hope you enjoy this. Okay, so what we're gonna need for this project is just a pencil with an eraser, a black ballpoint pen, a paintbrush, some coffee, instant coffee works best, one part coffee to two parts water. Um, that would be like if you use one, one spoon of instant coffee, then you would use two spoons of water. And you can mix up one thing that's um, one part coffee, two parts water, and then mix you up another one with two parts coffee, one parts water to make it a little darker. And you'll also need some coffee grounds. Now I'm gonna make a confession. I didn't have instant coffee, so I had to use um, brewed coffee, and it's not gonna work as well, but we're gonna make do with it. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna just take and your pencil and lightly draw a spiral, not from the very center of your page, but pretty close to it. I like for things to be slightly off center. Do not worry. I'm just going to pretend that went on up there. Don't worry about getting your lines straight because we're going to erase these lines anyway. I want them to be fat, so I'm going to come back and make another one around it. Now, see how softly I drew that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back over that and make th those lines squiggly. We don't want them to be straight at all. So we're going to softly make them squiggly. And don't worry about the fact that you can still see those other lines underneath it because we're going to erase them anyway. Let them get real squiggly. OK, 
after we've done that, let's look at a few pieces of bark. Um, this bark, we're just looking at it for inspiration to see the shapes on the inside of it. They have some coming across. They have some lines going up and down. And this is our inspiration for this piece. Notice the shapes inside the bark. You could look back at this, you could find some bark outside from a tree, or you could even look up a picture online. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw some shapes inspired by that inside of our um, spiral. Notice as you get farther along, your shapes should get a little larger just like the spiral does. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ballpoint pen and we're gonna go over the squiggly lines. And you can press down hard now. And we're just going over the squiggly lines. We're not going over those first lines we do. Okay, after you do that, you're gonna come back and you're gonna make another line parallel to those lines. Might have to go a little slower on this one to try to keep them somewhat even. Remember, this is inspired by nature. So, um, you don't have to worry about perfect symmetry or anything like that. Once you do, finish doing the outside lines parallel, you're also going to come in on these lines and uh, do the same thing. Notice it comes off of the page, and that's awesome. It's cool to let it go off of your page. It's not held in by the boundaries of that. Now, before we start painting with coffee, this is where we're gonna start erasing our pencil lines. If you go ahead and paint, you won't be able to come back and erase those pencil lines. So make sure to erase your pencil lines before you start painting. Now, if you don't have coffee and you wanna do this project, you could use watercolor paints that would work wonderfully, some brown watercolor paint. Um, if you have food coloring, food coloring usually doesn't come in brown, does it? But you can um, mix red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors together, and make brown. You just have to play with like how much blue, how much red to get the shade of brown you want. 
or you could go outside and get some dirt especially if you got some of that um, kind of reddish dirt and um, mix it up with a whole bunch of water and make you some paint like that and you could use the dirt dry dirt as um, your coffee ground Right. Let me check this again. Alright, so now we're ready to start painting. We've erased our pencil lines and it did um I've got my ink a little smeared there. That's okay. It's smeared down here too, so it's kind of balanced off. Anytime something like that happens, as long as it's repeated, no one will ever know you didn't mean for it to happen. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to start here in the middle of our spiral with our coffee and we're going to just do like one section at a time. We're not going to paint the uh, parallel lines, we're going to try to leave those white and we're just painting inside of them. Now it's awesome to have a variation of brown. You don't want it all to be the same tone of brown. So that's why I said you could mix you up some um, that has more instant coffee than the other areas. That's not possible when you're using this um, brewed coffee. So what I'm going to have to do where I want it darker brown is come back and put a little second coat on it. And that's okay. That's just one way that we have to modify and use what we can. That's what artists have always done. We use what we have on hand to create. We modify and adjust. All right, so I'm trying to be careful not to get inside these white lines, but if that happens somewhere, it just happens and I'll repeat it somewhere else. Now I'm gonna go back in areas that I want darker and add a little more coffee to it. And I like to do that around the edges. And it just adds for in interest to have a variation of brown. Or different values of brown instead of all the same value. Value, of course, being how dark or how light something is. love the way um, it just kind of flows together. This is actually, if you were watercolor, you'd call that a wet on wet technique. All right, so I have some areas that are darker brown, some areas that are lighter brown. So what would you do if you wanted it lighter brown? You could come back in some places with a little paper towel while it's still wet and lift some of that off to make it lighter in places, maybe around the center. Or you could add more water to it, but the more water you add, honestly, the uh, more wrinkled your page is going to be and the weaker your paper will be until it dries. While it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of coffee ground on it. This coffee, as it dries, will um, adhere to the paper. All right, so we're just going to continue that process one section at a time until we finish the entire spiral.
Okay, I finished the spiral, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and here and there add a little bit more coffee to it in those areas I want it really dark just to give it even a little bit more variety in the value. Okay, when we finish with this and you're happy with it, let's try to blow off some of the excess um, coffee grounds from the background. What we're going to do now is we're going to paint the background kind of in the same manner. We're just going to start here in the middle. I'm going to use a bigger brush because I have it and it'll just make it move along faster now that I don't have to be so careful about getting in all the little places little places but um, if you use the same brush that's fine too and again we're going to use different values we'll start out with kind of a medium tone and we're if you I don't know if you notice but if you accidentally get some inside your little white lines you could always lift it off if you do it before it dries Okay, I think I've finished with the background painting it. It's up to you if you want to add the coffee grounds. I'm looking at this. Leaving it like this creates um, a contrast between the inside of the spiral and the outside. And it makes the spiral more of a focal point. So it's up to you if you want to leave it like that. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some coffee grounds to mine, though, to kind of unify the background with the spiral. Because I feel like that white line that we've created with our parallel curvy is enough for me of a, a way of adding attention to the spiral. So I'm going to go ahead and before mine dries all the way, I'm going to add a few coffee grounds. The one good thing about this is that it does dry pretty quickly. Um, if you're in a rush, you could hold a hair dryer way away from it to speed up the drying process. But sometimes with um, watercolor paints or anything like this, this is very similar to watercolor. Um, that hair dryer will blow your paint and you'll have lost your details. So I'm going to just let this dry and then I'll shake off the excess coffee grounds and we'll see how it looks. Okay, here we have our final piece. I've shaken off the excess coffee grounds so you can see what was left remaining and it kind of helped to create a texture of something similar to bark. Um, you could see the areas that we made darker in value by adding extra coffee and the areas that we made lighter by lifting away some of the coffee paint. Also the white lines create an, a nice um, contrast and it, I think it came together very well. I can't wait to see what you created.